So a buddy of mine, Kyle, aka iOS photographer, the links to his Instagram will be down in the description. He just recently bought the Sony A7R4 and he asked me if I wanted to do a review on it. And so of course I said, uh, yeah. So uh, let's get to it. All right, so let's jump right in with the Sony a7R. Now this is a 61 megapixel full frame mirrorless camera that shoots 4K video. Now throughout this video, I'm sure I'll forget and I'll only say a7R. So just know when I say a7R, I mean the a7R Mark IV. All right, so the first thing I noticed when looking at this camera body are the three dials on top. You have your shooting mode, you have your exposure, and then you have your shutter speed. The other thing I noticed is the button sizes. Now these buttons are big. I think they're, I think they're big buttons. Um, they're well labeled. I think that's great. Uh, I'm not saying that I don't want big buttons. I think that it's fantastic, especially if you have sausage fingers. But I also like this little joystick type thing. Uh, it kind of reminds me of the PSP joysticks. All right, so then looking at this side, this is where all the memory card slots are. Uh, and there's two memory card slots, which is fantastic for photographers who shoot in RAW. Those file sizes are pretty big. Okay, and this side is where we have all the inputs and outputs for the camera. Under this flap here, we have the mic in, we have a headphone jack, we have HDMI port, as well as under this one, we have a USB type C port. So this way you can just plug the camera straight into your computer. You don't have to worry about taking the memory card out of your camera, plugging it into your computer, getting the pictures off. You can just plug the camera straight into your computer and get the pictures off that way, which makes it a lot easier. But one thing I've noticed with this camera body is its rear screen. Now it flips up so that way you can get a better viewing angle from the top, but it does not flip all the way around, which makes me think this camera is not meant for vloggers without an exterior monitor. I mean, it's definitely possible. Like I said, this camera does shoot in 4K, so you can shoot video, but I think this camera is more aimed toward photographers than videographers. Now let's go outside and get some shots just to get a better look at this camera. All right, so this camera's fantastic. I'm loving using this thing outside. It's lightweight and it's easy to carry around in a camera bag. Now, like I said, the camera's lightweight. The lens, however, I'm using the 135 uh, millimeter 1.8 Sigma lens. It's a fantastic lens. I'm loving this lens. It's just so heavy, so it makes the whole rig itself heavy. This camera is also weather and dust sealed, so having it out in the days like this, as you can see, it's been snowing. I've had it out in the snow the last few days, and the camera's working fantastic. Now the A7R can shoot in RAW, JPEG, or a combination of both. It also can shoot 10 frames per second at full resolution, and it has a silent shooting mode that shoots at 7 frames per second. All right, one thing a lot of people are talking about with this camera is this continuous autofocus. And the autofocus on this thing is ridiculous. It has 567 autofocus points and is real-time face tracking to help make sure your subject is always in focus. One feature I really love about this camera is the viewfinder. It's a 5.76 million dot OLED true finder and it looks fantastic. I think it looks better than the rear screen and when you put your eye up to it, it automatically takes the image from the rear screen and puts it into the viewfinder. It is getting cold out here. I mean, I brought my uh, heated jacket, but I didn't bring gloves. So my hands are starting to get a little cold. So let's get back inside. Okay, so the A7R4 has a built-in five gigahertz Wi-Fi connection with tethering. Now what this means is that you can wirelessly connect your computer and your camera so that way you can see the pictures pop up on your computer screen as you're taking them. All right, so another cool feature about this camera is pixel shift. Now what this mode allows you to do is it allows you to take four or 16 photos and then you can combine them together using Sony's Imaging Edge software and this will give you a picture with better color accuracy and 240 megapixels. All right, so now I want to take a look at two photos, one taken by the Sony a7R 4 and the other taken by my Canon 70D and just compare them and see how they look. So this picture was taken with the 70D and the reason I chose this photo is because of the small text underneath the red banner on that white sign there. So let's go ahead and we'll zoom in on that and just kind of take a look and see how the text looks. And as you can see, it's very pixelated. It doesn't look great. I don't think I'd be able to read it if I didn't already know what it said. So let's go ahead and look at the same photo taken with the A7R 4 and just see what it looks like there. All right, so I think that looks pretty good. I mean, I can read it. It doesn't look great. You can definitely tell 
there's a little bit going on there, but uh, I think it looks pretty good. I can read it, like I said, which is fantastic. So let's go ahead and we're just going to put both these pictures on screen at the same time just so we can get a good comparison. All right, so yeah, obviously the A7R looks way better than the 70D, So, which was to be expected. Like I said, we've talked about this camera, this whole video, uh, about how good it is with photography. So, I mean, it was to be expected that it was going to beat out the 70D, but I just think that that's crazy. I think that looks really good. So it's obvious this camera is great, but before you go spending $3,500 on a new camera, make sure you think about what you're using it for. Like I said before, this camera is very much geared towards photographers. Now that's not to say you can't use it to shoot video. Like I said before, this thing shoots 4K video. So if you're shooting 1080p right now and you jump up to 4K, that's obviously gonna be an improvement because of the camera you bought. But at the same time, there are less expensive 4K cameras out there. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Hit that like button, subscribe, ring the bell to get notifications when I post new videos. If you want to see a more in-depth look at this camera, I can definitely get a video out there, so let me know. I'm also thinking about doing a tethering video, just how to tether the camera to your computer. So if you want to see that, let me know down in the comments, and I can definitely get that up here. As always, links to my other videos are up top there, so you go check those out. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you next time.